Welcome to part two of the HDDA 55300 lens comparison. Um, yeah, it's been pretty interesting. The difference between these two lenses. Uh, one thing actually I didn't do in the last video was swap out the... Ah. So the lens hoods are interchangeable, except... The PLM is wider, so it won't go back in after the fact, which I think is kind of interesting. Well, really it makes you wonder why they went ahead and redesigned the entire thing. But anyway, maybe there was just no way around it. But I know everyone's been waiting for the aspect of the image quality comparison. So let's rewind a little bit to that exact section from the last video and we'll continue on and show the images and show it all in all its glory back to back let's do it all right so now that we've got the images into a viewer uh let's take a look at them uh now remember i did have all the corrections and everything off however i did have to redo this uh i was having some very strange issues with the PLM. I'm not sure exactly what was happening. Um, it just didn't seem to be able to lock focus 100%. It was focusing on something, but I'm not sure exactly what it was focusing on because it sure wasn't the basketball net. Um, it was on a tripod. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so there are a couple things that I noticed. One, the contrast is much, much better on the PLM. Uh, you can see that for yourself, especially uh, the roof here and the green in the trees. There's just a lot more deep tones and contrast um, coming from the PLM. Now, the other thing is if you look very, very carefully, you'll notice along this edge here, this is, sorry, on the images on the left are the HD 55300 screw driven and on the right side is the PLM you'll notice the field of view is wider on the PLM. You can see this window gap here on the house and there isn't one on this side. Same with uh, this little uh, furnace stack or vent. You'll notice there's a bigger gap on this side in regards to the PLM. And same thing with the door handle on the van here. There is no door handle on the van here. So I don't know if it's this the older red ring uh, HD 55300 is focus breathing or if it even is actually 300 millimeters or is it greater magnification than 300 or is the PLM not quite 300 or is this the accurate one that's actually 300. I don't know. Um, I just thought that this was an interesting thing and you'll notice that trend as I go across the shots here, you'll notice this is a much tighter crop, uh, which actually for this one, mm, uh, they are 97.5 millimeter, 98 millimeter. So equivalent focal length, 147, 147. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. That's very, very strange. Um, but the field of view is definitely different in between the two lenses here. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. Um, you know, you can see this, the gap between this out of focus light here and the gap on the PLM is a lot greater. So this is giving you a wider angle of view, but at the same time, it doesn't really seem to be missing too much in regards to the magnification. So it's, quite interesting um, and the other thing too is even though this was shot at f4 on the non PLM uh, it's ISO 160 and remember I was in TAV and exposure is 1 500th of a second and uh, same with this for, except this is f4.5 with ISO of 160 at 1 500th of a second so they're identical it's th it seems like the t-stop is actually allowing this to have a smaller aperture but still bring in the same amount of light as the old one it's very very bizarre um and let's see here so this one this one i was a little further off um so this was 210 and 190. um but again you'll see iso 200 okay this one's a little different iso 250 
at f5.6 for both. Um, I mean, in regards to the actual image quality, the out of focus area, this seems to be, I guess because of the contrast, I and mean, you can see the squares more in the brick area, this seems to be a bit more smoothed out. However, w when you go to the full magnification here, let's go all the way to the 300, and again, so here we are at ISO 250, one five hundredth of a second, f5.8 on the non-PLM. And on the PLM, we're at 6.3 at ISO 250, one five hundredth of a second. It's very, very strange. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. Um, but again, you can see the wider field of view on the PLM again. It's not crazy. I mean, it's not a like an insane amount of width um, that you're gaining, but it is there. Uh, now, if we zoom in here, let's go to 50% and look at the rim itself of the basketball net. You'll notice an immediate difference in regards to the sharpness of the PLM. <clears throat> and just so you see this mark here, that's the mark there. So I'm at the same area. Let's look down a bit. Yeah, so this is remarkably sharper. Every single little tiny divot of the metal is, is right there. I mean, every single f super fine detail is there. And then if we go down and look at the rope itself, you'll notice the out of focus area, there is some fringing, fringing, whatever you want to call it, along the edges here in compared to the out of focus area on the PLM. It's non-existent actually. Uh, same with right along the rim here, these little sections where the loop holds the rope non-existent on the PLM and you'll notice it a lot more over here right on the edge right at the edges here and let's look at the PLM so edge to edge seems the PLM does a better job controlling any of the aberrations remember I had all all the settings off so there's no in-camera correction whatsoever um, but you can see there is a lot of purple fringing, fringing. I don't even know. Like, what do you even call that? I'm not even sure. Uh, there is a little bit on the PLM, but not nearly as bad as the red ring uh, version of the 55300. So it is pretty interesting. Um, I mean, th the image quality, there is a substantial difference um, in regards to controlling of aberrations. Uh, where am I at here? 50%. Let's go to 50 on the PLM. And now, of course, this is not working. Oh, uh, come on, software. That's fantastic. Okay, there we go. Let's go 50. There we are. Um, anyway, so th there is a lot more contrast. It is slightly sharper. I mean, the ultra fine details really do stand out on the PLM, like all these little hairs coming off the strings and everything. And you have it here, but it's not as it's not nearly as defined. So super ultra micro contrast, I guess, and uh, super fine details do show up a lot better on the PLM. Um, I'm just a little confused in regards to that whole field of view thing that like that is just crazy I was not expecting that field of view to be that way um, I, I don't even know what to make of that to be honest um, is that it? yeah that's the same string so again you can see there's a lot a lot of detail actually this one is pretty much the same I would say this is this is pretty dead even um, the out of focus areas, the bokeh, all that is fantastic on both of these lenses. I mean, it's nothing to, nothing to freak out about one versus the other. However, you can see the detail along this out of focus area of the string here. There is a, a lot of ghosting, um, which is very defined. There's like a green line uh, along here, and then there's a massive amount of purple fringing here little bit on here for the purple fringing however 
there is no green ghost line running along the Edifocus area. So overall, the PLM does have uh, you know a slight improvement in image quality. Uh, me personally, I think the handling trade-off is worth it um, on the PLM if you need ultra fast focus and just that little bit of edge in regards to image quality. It is definitely worth the cost difference uh, to actually get the PLM. Uh, but I mean that that's pretty much all I can say about this. Uh, you know, I mean the images are what they are. Uh, you know, the the sharpness is definitely there. It's a l the PLM is a lot sharper than the non PLM. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that wraps up this comparison. And next, I will be doing the 35 versus 50 because that's the, another one that everyone. Uh, always is tossed up about and uh, yeah that's pretty much it if you like the video leave a like if you have not already please do subscribe it does help me out more than you actually know and if you'd like to support the channel I leave those instructions in the bottom of the description of each video that I upload so please take a look at that and uh, that's about it I'm gonna wrap this up and you guys will see me on my next video I'm out.